Hello everybody, I'm back with another video. If you're new to my channel then welcome. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram and Twitter then please do. In today's video I'm going to be doing a review on Euphoria. I've heard I've heard a lot about this show so recently I decided to watch it so I'm going to tell you my thoughts on the show. I'll be talking about the show episode by episode and also if you see me looking down it's because I have notes on this phone so that is why. Episode 1 I put my thoughts of the show so far is that I find it interesting. I didn't remember that Noah from The Kissing Booth is in the TV show but I don't like his character. I think he's kind of a dick and when Lou says that she didn't have a problem with him until what he does to Jules made me not like him more. I want to know more about what he did. I really like the character of Mickey and and how he tries many times to put his friend in check. Then I put update. I don't like McKay as much as I did in the beginning of the season. And people say that he's being a wimp or a pushover. Because yes he could have done more. But the fact that he was laughing at Katie's news shows what kind of people he are. So when I say he could have done more. Is that when they're in the car and he's telling his friend. Oh you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't call our names. Because they were in the car and they passed jewels while she was on her bike and he was calling her names and making fun of her so that's why he's saying oh you should have done that but by the time he said that it was too late she would have done it he should have spoke up while he was this while he was saying what he was saying so maddie tells this guy to have sex with her because he wants to make because she wants to make nate jealous a lot happens at the party but one of the things that happen is that jewels puts a knife at Nate and this part I don't remember word for word but it was on the lines of why are you why are you here nobody wants you here and calls her names and getting closer and closer to her then when she puts the knife on him saying oh it was a joke you're crazy I don't know how many minutes it was into the episode but at this point I knew I wasn't going to like the character of Nate I'm starting to see why people say that the show makes them very uncomfortable in some scenes because I was very uncomfortable in some of the scenes but I understand that that's the point you're supposed to be uncomfortable. I was very surprised that the guy who slept with Jaws was Nate's dad so that was, that was very surprising to me. Now it says update. Update now that I have watched the whole the show I realised that each episode starts off with a backstory so the episode is mostly about that character so I will, make, so I will be mentioning them from this point on. If I remember, I'll put pictures on the screen. If I forget, then I am sorry. All of the episodes talk about Lou, but this one mostly focuses on her backstories, or I think it does. Some people might say that the last episode will discuss her on the most, but I think this one does. So her backstory is that when she was seven years old, she might have been, she might have or been diagnosed with bipolar and other and other things and her mum popped her with a lot of drugs so that's how she got addicted to drugs so that and her dad had drugs as well because I think he was in hospital I don't really remember that much but I think he was in hospital so she had her dad had a lot of drugs as well so that's how she got addicted to drugs I might be wrong about that but that's that's what I remember off by memory so two is Nate's episode so okay so I thought I feel like the dad is messed up in the head I understand that Nate went through an experience seeing them videos but I still don't like him Nate's dad has a porn collection and his backstory is that Nate finds out so Nate sees all of the videos and he keep, the dad keeps it in his drawer in his office and it's color coded and so when you so on I think it's the, on the sides of the the disc you have to put he used the colour code to put the password into the computer. So I put I feel like Kat is lying about how she's she lost her virginity. I feel like Kat is lying about how she lost her virginity and then I put turns out she wasn't lying. <laughs> the next thing I'm gonna talk about is a scene that I am happy they didn't show more because this scene is where I felt like I couldn't watch so this scene does make me very comfortable. So Nate finds a way to get to where the guy who hooks up with his ex is staying so he's staying in this motel and 
And what he wants him to do is to admit that he raped his girlfriend. So Nate punches this guy and he's asking him, did you rape her? And the guy keeps on saying no and begging him not to hurt him. And Nate keeps punching him and saying, if he did. And after a while he says, I know you raped her. And this scene was very hard for me to watch. And it is because, it's because the guy, because Nate is messing up this guy. So he's punching him in the face. And we know that the guy didn't do what Nate keeps on saying that he does. And in this moment, Nate could have killed the guy for something he didn't do. So I started to look away because I was afraid that they were going to show more, but they didn't, and that makes me happy. Episode 3 is Cat's episode. Cat's episode. So the fact that Cat is writing fanfiction about Louis and Harry's ship did surprise me. So they're Larry Stanison, that's what she's writing about. So I was wondering what I was wondering what Amanda Beebe's thoughts. Well, I was wondering what Amanda Beebe's thoughts would be when she saw that, since I know she's a fan of One Direction and Euphoria. I'm not a fan of the ship, but it did make me laugh. This is the episode that has Jaws, is it Jaws or what is it? Jaws. Jaws and Tyler's storyline. Pete's girlfriend's name is Maddie, so Maddie finds out that he has six pictures in his phone and there's about 10 of them all around that amount. Rue kisses Jules, but Jules regrets her, so Rue, Rue goes to Fez, but in drugs. So she's banging on the door, calling him a lot of disgusting things, but Fez is a good friend and a king in so many people's eyes, including mine, because you can see how hard he is, how hard it is seeing someone you care about like that, but he still says, he still says no, but you can tell that he didn't want to say no, but he had to. So the next episode is episode four, which is Jules's episode. So the backstory for Jules is that her mom lied to her that she was taking her to this tour place, taking her to this place to have a tour. But in reality, Jules' mom brought her there because the plan was to admit her into her psychologic, psychologic. I do not know how to pronounce that word. Psycholostic. I think it's psycholostic. Psycholostic hospital. She wants to admit her into a psychologic hospital. I remember when I watched this scene that that she did that because Jules is trans and that is a really terrible and it's very terrible that she did that and it did make me sad. We found out that, that Jules doesn't like the way her brain works so she doesn't like the way her brain works or her body looks and so she, she does stuff of she does stuff as a way of coping with that and one of them is self-harming so from the mo from the mom's point of view i do understand that she wanted to protect her child but at the same time like wasn't there an other option instead of putting her in that kind of hospital like then the next thing I put is I'm confused if they want me to feel sorry for Nate or not because one minute they show me how he's had um how he's had struggles in in his life, so in his past, and then the next thing they show me is him being awful to Jules. So if they're trying to make me feel bad for him, it's not working. Then I put Jules did get better, which was good news, and she was able to leave that place and at sixteen she's just at sixteen she started to transition. So this is the episode with the carnival where Jules finds out that the guy she hooked up with, with the guy that she hooked up with is Nate's dad. So McKay meets up with Nate, his high school buddy, and acted like he wasn't with his girlfriend who's Cassie. I liked I liked McKay in the beginning, but parts like this makes me not like him. McKay tells McKay tells Nate that they are chilling when Nate asks them if they're in a relationship. Then when she walks away upset. Nate, um, McKay's like, oh, it's not that big deal. His excuse is that he knows Nate, so he didn't tell him because he would bring up what she did, meaning the sex tape videos, which is BS because that was leaked without her consent. Like, that's 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 stupid. But next thing is that Cat is at the carnival and she wants to see Ethan. So Ethan is a person who she meets a couple of episodes ago. He sat next to her in one of her classes. They end up going on the ride together, they have a lovely time, but then when Kat goes to get drinks, she sees even talking to this girl, and Kat starts making up things in her head and gets angry, so she drops the drinks and leaves. So a, a little bit later, 
She needs this guy that has a reputation to do with sex. So he has a reputation to do with sex. So they end up having sex in the car when he's, while he willingly knows that she's underage. So she, so he's like 25 maybe. So he willingly knows that she's underage but still has sex with her. And the next thing is, I think we, I think we need more on the cat's backstory because it is very clear that she's dealing with self, self-esteem issues, but it seems like the character needs more development. It seems like the character, she seems like the character that needs more development information. So Cassie, Cass and Maddie end up doing Molly, or Molly, end up doing Molly, which is a type of drug. Maddie pushes over the chili, calls Nate's mum a cunt, then Nate, then Nate, then Nate pushes her away. While that's happening, Cass, Cassie, or Cass, goes on the carousel with Daniel and basically masturbates while on the horse. So Nate pushes Mary against this wall and grabs her by the neck and leaves the bruise. Mary asks Nate about the pictures and Nate says it's not what it looks like and it's complicated to explain right now and asks Mary not to tell anyone, not to tell anyone. She promises that on her life that she won't. And they apologise for getting angry and they hug. But to be honest, I don't think he's one hundred percent sorry. He only did that because he knew that she was she knows about the pictures, that's what I think. I put Gia, brackets Rue's sister, isn't answering her phone or her text, so Rue and Jules go looking for her. Drew goes to meet Tyler and it's Nate, but we already knew that. And she was very surprised and Nate says to her that he's not the person that he met that night. So I put bracket the first the first time they met, but uh, when they met at the party. So, so he's talking about how when they were at the party and how over the last few weeks he's gotten to know her and kind of feels closer to her that, than anyone else in the world. And Jules tells, Jules' reply is that she doesn't trust him and he tells her that he doesn't trust her either. And then they kiss and then and this is when I, my hope for Nate came, this is when my hope for Nate comes back and then in like seconds it goes away because Nate goes, goes back into being Nate and does this thing when he tells, and does things that Jules is not comfortable with and calls her broken and how it's scary to herself, him and his family and then blackmails her by telling her if he tries to ruin his life, he will ruin with hers. He will ruin hers by um, the pictures that she sent to Tyler. So Nate's character confuses me because while he's blackmailing her, he calls her smart and other things and says how she doesn't deserve to go to jail and has people looking at her like she's an animal. So I'm like, he, he kind of does like back handed comments. So he would be like, oh, you're so pretty. He'd be like, oh, you're so pretty. But then blackmails her. And Nate's just confusing to me. Next is episode 5 and it's Maddie's episode. So Maddie used to be in a pageant but then it turns out that this coach was a child of this coach was a child of Melissa. So now her mum told her not to do pageant, not to do it anymore. So he wasn't he wasn't her coach, he was somebody else's coach on the news. So he had about ten he did it to about ten girls. So Maddie's confident was through doing the pageant, which is why she, which is why she loved it, which is why she loved it so much. But in time, she learned that you don't have to do anything to do, you don't have to do anything to get confidence because confidence is already inside of you. Because confidence is already inside of you, so we get a better look into Maddie and Nate's relationship. And there were so many times that she wanted to push him, but, but didn't because of his size. So she knew he would do things 10 times worse. So Maddie is scared of Nate, but not because of how violent he is. Because she knows that no matter what he does, she will still love him. So Maddie comes into school wearing a hoodie, but then fakes because of no air conditioning. So they call the police and Nate gets called in. So then I put side plot. Please put um, calves on Maddie to the table because she's not removing her jumper. So she wants they want to get pictures of the bruise. And then I put the... Sick emoji because 
that did make me uncomfortable. Like, I understand they want to get a picture, but they willingly put in cuffs on somebody without their permission. Then they take Nate, then they talk to Nate, and all I hear is victim blaming because he says, I don't want to get her in trouble. And he says that over and over again. Then we go back to Jules and Rue's relationship, and they go and get a tattoo. So that's this is when the relationship f officially started. So Rue comes over for dinner, and Drew's dad says that he thinks it's a good influence on Rue, um, on Rue. And Rue just, and Jules just started noticing how much Rue relies on her because she's her new job, and that's the reason why she had, that's the reason why she wants to stay clean, taking better care of herself. And Lexi, who is Jules' sister, and who's a long-term friend, long-term friend also has this, also gave her also had the realisation so everyone is telling Maddie about how it's not love but Maddie says that he would kill for her and she would do the same for him and she has a fight with her mum saying she doesn't want to be like her parents because they don't talk they don't talk and her dad has been sleeping on the couch since she was 10 so she calls Nat but because she calls Kat but because Kat is busy with is busy with a friend meaning she's with a guy she doesn't she tells her she tells her that she can't come so the dad is about to have this hook up but it looks like he couldn't go through with it because he kept on talking about his son so that's Nate's dad and he says he's and how he sees so much rage and anger in them and it scares him because it's too late I'm glad he's, that he's seen what they are but it's only because he realizes that it's because of him and then he should realise that it's not too late because it's because of him that they like that but it's not too late to fix things so that's what I want him to realise that it's not too late so next we go to episode 6 which is McKay's episode so McKay's backstory is that he has the type of dad that would like to tell boys don't cry but instead he says bottle up your anger until it explodes so after McKay tells his dad that this boy calls him the N word he says bottle up your anger don't cry, don't show them weakness, all of them kind of stuff. I don't know what's wrong with parents in this small town, but something needs to be changed ASAP because the reason why a lot of these characters are the way they are is because of their upbringing. So this is the Halloween episode and Jules is regretting, regretting any romantic affection from Rue and ends up drinking and jumps in the pool. Daniel is the one who threw the party and if you need a reminder on who he is, well, he's the one who likes Cass and they met with her while they were on, while they were at the carnival. And the reason why I said likes her like that is because he doesn't want to be with her. He only wants to be with her for sex. And when he, and when she regrets him, he says things like, oh, you're only worthy of sex. And, and way more than I did, and way more than I did. And it did surprise me that he actually like said that. This did surprise me because he did actually seem like he liked her. But he went through all of this. So saying to McKay. So he went through all of this. So saying what he said to McKay. That he went through all of this even though he knew that she was with McKay. When all he wanted from her was sex. So Maddie and Nate secretly meet at this hotel once a week and we see that Nate is starting to make a plan for the whole Manny having a brew situation. So at the party Kat and Ethan are talking about the costumes and are, and Ethan asked her about what happened at the carnival and instead of answering the question she asks him about why he, he's so weird saying how he has a fascination about her fascination about her and basically how she's not bothered about the situation. So she says to him that if she he wants to have sex with her she says to him if he wants to have sex with her then he should just tell her because they won't be a couple or anything like that and that would be the only reason they would want to hang out again that would be the only reason they should hang out again because she only thinks that everybody just wants it for sex and if it's not sex then why why bother talking to her that's the mindset she has so while mckay and Cass starts to have sex while McKay and Cass starts to have sex, the boys from his school comes into the room and calls McKay gay and pushes him on the floor. 
so he's on the floor while they're he while they are calling him all of these swords so this part did surprise me because but after what happened McKay goes to the bathroom and he's in the bathroom for a long time and when he comes out he asks her why she's dressed asking if she doesn't want to have sex anymore and she's like but what happened just happened and he's like oh it's not that big deal like like it didn't just happen and I understand that he's this is his way of dealing with, with things because he, he learned that from his dad but that's that's not the way to get out your anger because he literally gets his anger out of her in her because they end up having sex and he orgasms inside her so that's his way of getting the anger out and I was like oh no this 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 these people are literally messed up in this town and while the whole Daniel and Cass happen situation happened they have a talk about what happened earlier on So Ethan and Kat is going around in one of the bathrooms. So this is the part that may be annoyed because Kat asks even how many how many people he had had how many people he had had sex with, and it turns out he's a virgin. And she like, and she's like, oh, I don't have sex with virgins. They are they are too they get too clingy or get too attached. Like she wasn't just a virgin a couple of episodes, but everything goes great until he comes early. So he goes to the bathroom and when he comes back, Cass is gone. So McKay almost goes to the bathroom that Daniel and Cass is in. But then when Lexi comes, but then Lexi, Lexi comes to the rescue and tells him that she went home and probably fell asleep. Probably fell asleep, that's why she's not answering her phone. So Rue decides that she wants to leave because she feels like a burden. She comes and beats the queen that she is and she tells her she's not. And then they hug and Rue still wants to leave and so does Lexi but Jules doesn't and Rue says to her that she won't leave about her so she decides to stay and this is the part where we learn more about Nate's plan and the writers deserve the writers deserve an Oscar or an award if they haven't gotten one already because wow that plan is very evil so Nate goes to Tyler's and says you can either go to the police station and say he choked his girlfriend after getting angry because she rejected you and after she told you that she had a boyfriend, then you can go about your life and then he would go about his life. But then one day Maddie would go down to the police station and say that he was that she was raped at the pool and then at the carnival it happened again and then she got assaulted. So Tyler goes to the police station and confirms to confirms to a crime that he didn't commit. And since Nate is blackmailing Jules, she pretends to be one of the witnesses. So this is one of my favourite parts because normally cops in shows or movies are very stupid but the cop says but the cops can tell that something is wrong and even says how serious it is to fake false information. So Jewel says she does understand and then Nate comes in the party wearing a jewel a jail costume, so a prisoner costume. So the next episode is episode seven. This is Cassie's story. Cassie's dad was the type of handsome that woman would flirt with him a lot. Her dad wanted her to be an ice skater and for a while she was and she was really good at it but then he couldn't afford it so he stopped encouraging her. Fast forward to her being older and the dad leaves her and her mum saying it's because he doesn't want the responsibility of being a dad and people would of course say that he was cheating. So she used to see him on weekends and then it turned out to once a week or once a month. Then one day he was driving home from work and got into an accident and he became less responsive. Then one day after her birthday at night he came to her house for a few things which I'm pretty sure he wanted things to sell so he can get drugs. Then leaves and never sees, then she never sees him again after that. This is when the pattern of her dating a lot of guys started before she dated McKay. So to her she didn't, it didn't to her it didn't matter if they were smart or stupid, she just didn't want to be alone. So this is the episode that Rue asks his first to threaten Nate with a gun and Nate tries to get a one over on, on first but it doesn't work. So first could have pulled his gun on him but he doesn't. He's like, I'm doing this for my friends, my f I'm doing this my for my friend, my family. Nate might be the bigger person in size but when it comes to heart, face, face wins 20 times. Face wins 20 times. 
There's this friend meeting with the girls. There's this friend meeting between the girls. And Maddie says to Kat that you have to change. Yep, you have changed, but not in a good way. And this leads to Lexi saying how she's never had two guys interested in her. And Cassie doesn't listen to her and says about her being shy. Or one of them says it, and I don't think... Or one of the girls says it, and I don't think she is shy. So this is when, in this episode, we meet Rue's mom. Rue's mom's new boyfriend. And Jewel has offered her other friends. So we learned that... Um, so we learned that Jules was cheating on Rue while she was away with her friends. And the reason why I think that Rue and Jules' relationship is toxic is because that's that's not healthy. A person shouldn't be your drug. Like I understand that you love your you, you love your significant other, like that's fine. You know, like, you can love your other, you can think of the world of them, you can go to heaven and earth, uh, uh, but a person shouldn't be your drug. Like Nobody should be a drug. You shouldn't have a person shouldn't be your drug because she basically sees her as a coping. She sees her as a coping as a coping mechanism. I don't even know how to say the word. She sees her as some a way of coping, and that's not good because as soon as she as soon as they are not together, she goes back to drugs, and that's why she went to Phase, who was again a king for saying no to her, even though it was hard. That's why she went to Phase. Because she knew that he, that she would, because she knew that he had drugs. So that's why she went to him. And Ru, and Ru is getting an infection because she won't pee. So Cassie tells McKay that she's pregnant and McKay is all like, me, 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 I, I, what about me? She doesn't, he doesn't even ask her about, he doesn't, at this point we don't even know if, if she's going to keep the baby or not. He doesn't even know if she's. If she's gonna keep the baby or not, but he's just all like me, 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 I, I, I. What about me? So Kat goes on this webcam with this person, this person who sends her a lot of money, and it's a black screen, and the person sees her undressing on camera. Some people think it's Ethan, but I really hope it wasn't. So Nate calls the police on Fares to come and search his house. So Fares has to get rid of a lot of the drugs and loses his money. So episode eight is none of these episodes. So. I'm just going to go over the episode. Episode 8, I think it's nobody's episode because we don't really get a backstory, but it focuses on all of the characters. So, Rue goes in hospital after what happened with her bladder, and she says about how she likes being there because everyone, everything is mostly done for her. Nate takes this girl to the Winter Ball, or the, to the Winter Ball, or the event that happened, and it's this random girl. I heard that she was one of the cheering girls on the cheerleading team but I still don't remember who she is. I don't want to talk about the costume she was wearing but wow. Why was it needed to have an arse out like that especially in a high school gym? So he so he was dancing with her and Rule's, Rule, so Rue Rue and Jules are also dancing together. So this is the episode that Kat talks to Ethan about what happened at the fair which finally Ethan tells her that he has liked her since that day he sat next to her in class and they kiss. And the thing that I, the thing is that I do really like them together, but this scene did make me mad because at the same time, but did really make me mad at the same time because Ethan deserves better. I understand that Kat has this deep issues that needs to be dealt with, but it doesn't justify her action. Her actions, she does remind me of Ted Sarah Burgess in a way, so I'm half and half with Kat, but because I do like her, but she annoys me a lot at the same time. Because the vibe I get from her is that I had one one bad apple equals ten bad apples when that's not true. When she was with when when she was like to Ethan, if you aren't going to have sex with me, then why are we talking? Why are we talking? I was really mad at that scene, but I am glad that she finally had that realization. So back to Nate back to Nate now and Rue and Rue goes to him saying, You don't hurt my friend and Nate or like, Oh, you're really pretty which is ill because she, he's doing the backhanded compliment thing again. He's doing the backhanded compliment thing again, so that made me sick. So then, when we get next, we get the scene from when they were playing football, and the person who was supposed to catch the ball couldn't turn their right and left. So they had to play the ball himself, and they did end up winning, which was really nice. So the scene after that is between Nate and his dad, and Nate starts banging his head on the floor because. That Nate's dad doesn't 
blames Nate for what happened, even though it wasn't Nate's fault. Like, just because the person couldn't tell them right, their right and left, it's not Nate's fault. So this part did surprise me, and it did make me a bit emotional. And the reason for that is because I do still don't like Nate, but he is the way he is because of his dad. So I, like, I felt bad for him. So this scene I did forget about, and it's Maddie took a DVD, so she has one of the tapes of Nate's dad. So then we are shown Cassie's abortion scene, which is cut with her ice skating scene. And this was beautifully done, and the way they went back and forth between it, between the scenes that I did really like. So Rue thinks it's a good idea for them to run away together. So for her and Jules to run away together. And Rue decides at the last minute not to go. And at this point I was very surprised. But I was happy at the same time. Because can you imagine how they are together? Because they're very toxic. I think they're a very toxic couple. And they struggle being in their own household. God help them if they were together. But during this time Faze breaks into someone's house and doesn't see the blood on the money and I don't know how that happened how could you not see the blood on the money it was very very obvious it was very obvious but also the way that Fares went crazy on the doctor when the child comes in I am very interested interested to know why because it wasn't until the guy tried to protect the child that he started going crazy on him so he started beating him in the head and Faze was going and I thought Faze was going to do something to the child but I'm glad he didn't so Rue starts doing drugs again and some people think that she died but I think she just had a I think she was just high or overdosed and the scene in her imaginary or her and the scene uh, we scene of her that we see I think it's her dreaming or it's her imagination so that's all the things I have to talk about the episode now I'm going to say my overall thoughts on the show so my thoughts on the show is that I thought the show was really good I enjoyed watching it I can understand why people say that it made them feel uncomfortable because there are scenes that made me feel like that as well but I understand why they did it like, why they did it like that because it's very important to the story and that was the point of the scenes in the show I liked a lot of the characters the only character I didn't like was I liked a lot of the characters the most the, the most the character I really didn't like was Nate and the dad but the dad more than Nate there are a lot of scenes that I was expecting and there are scenes in the last episode that I got emotional and I was shocked at the same time. I think the cast that was chosen was really good and it all did really well and I really liked the soundtrack and I think the songs were really the songs that was chosen were really good and I would 100% recommend the show and I heard they I heard that they might do a season two so I'm very excited for that. And I think the ending could give me a lot of questions. I ended up watching the episodes 101 as well so i thought they were good i find it interesting when we was talking to ali ali i think that's how you pronounce his name and i want more of jules in therapy because i thought that was very interesting i'm going to talk about questions that people might have and so one of the questions is that who's my favorite character and or what were my favorite episode favorite episode m might be the carnival episode i think the carnival episode might be my favorite I'm not sure, but I did like the Carnival episode. The kind of, I think the Carnival episode is my favourite. Who's my favourite characters? Well, it would have to be Ethan, Rue. Even though I don't agree with things that Rue does, I do like Rue as a character. I like, I like Faze. Faze is the king. Faze, is, Faze, and Ethan, Faze and Ethan are my king. Faze and Ethan are kings. And I like Cassie. I like Cassie. I did use that McKay but not anymore. Like I liked him in the beginning but then you just learn more and more that he's very misogynistic. So I don't like him. But I do feel sorry for him because his dad is all of the parents are just they need help. But I know I've said this before but they just need help. And yeah, so my favourites will have to be Ethan Ethan Cassie Ethan Cassie Rue and Ethan, Cassie, Ethan, Cassie, Rue and okay. Ethan, so Ethan, Cassie, Ethan, Cassie, Wu, Rue and oh, so I also like the sister, Jules' sister, is it Jules' sister? 
Jules' sister. I forgot her name now. I like her. I like her and I like Jules' sister. I think her name's Gick. Jules' sister. So those are my favourites. So Ethan, Cassie. Ethan, Cassie, Rue. Rue's sister. And Jules' sister. I think it's Lexi. I think it's Lexi. I think Lexi is Jules' sister. And then Gia is Rue's sister. So I think those five would be my favourite. I don't like me. I don't like McKay. And I don't like the dad. Even though I'm glad he sees that he's the problem. That he's he's the one who put the anger in there. And fi like, finally! Like, oh my gosh. I'm glad that he saw that. But he needs to say, oh, it's too late. So you put anger in them. You made them the person they are. And then you're going to say, oh, it's too late to change them now. I already put that anger. <sighs> Just the parents. The parents are the problem. Next question. A person with problem. Episode of the carnival one. I think that's my favourite episode. I think the carnival one was my favourite, even though I can't choose. But that, I think the carnival one and the last episode. And another question people might have is about how I said that it's very uncomfortable. And yes, I do think it's very uncomfortable, but I do think it's still a good show. And a lot of people have said that they watched the first episode and they would be like, nope, that's it. That's all I need to see. I don't need to see anymore. And... In a way, I was like that, but I just still find it an enjoyable show because there's another show that I've seen that there were scenes that were very uncomfortable, but I still enjoyed the show. But that's I'm not I'm not going to talk about that show in this in this review because that show I would talk about in that review. It was Squid Game, so if anybody's thinking and watching that, it was Squid Game, but that would be for another day. But That'll be for another day but anyway but yes even though there are a lot of shows a lot of parts that made me uncomfortable i think it's still an enjoyable show and i am see excited for season two when and if that comes around and i am planning to do a review on season two but do not hold me to that because sometimes i think i plan to do it and something else comes up so i am planning to do it but we'll see about that would i give the show out of 10 i would give it a nine i'll probably give it a nine or eight out of 10 because i think it's really enjoyable but that the uncomfortable scenes is why i didn't i wouldn't watch it as much as i watch the uncomfortable scenes are why i wouldn't watch it as much as i watch other shows and but i do like i do find it very interesting and i was very hooked on a lot of the episodes so a lot of the episodes i was like oh my gosh what's gonna happen next so i did binge watch it i think i binge watched it in a couple of days i don't even remember but it was very fast i watched it in about two or three days so that's how much I enjoyed it a character I didn't mention characters that I didn't mention is McKay's brothers because I don't really care about them because as Amanda says they're truly really and truly really dumb and I'm pretty sure they were the ones who was growing that cat when she was when they found out that she was a virgin and they said that she didn't believe her and then that's that's why she, they, she made a video, that's why she made the video, the, the sex thing. So I don't like them, but I, that's why I didn't mention them. So just in case you were wondering, why didn't I mention about McKay's brothers? That I don't like them, that's why. And plus, they're not that, in, they're not that, they're not that interesting in the, in the show. Like, their stories are not that important. They're just, they're just jerks, that's all they are. So that's why I didn't mention them. In case anyone is wondering why I didn't mention Trinity and Trinity Dumb or Thing 1, Thing 2, whichever, whatever you want to call them. They're just, they're just there. That's just all they are. They're just there. And they're the ones who are also, I just remembered, also they were the ones that were per, um, persuading Rue's sister to do drugs because when Rue was looking for her, she found them with them and then she's like, I picture they were like, oh, you used to be so nice or whatever like oh since you had it off since you had it off with her she, you turned into this bee you've turned into this you've turned into um i think they called her a bitch i don't remember what but they I'm, I'm pretty sure it was them who was saying all these things about rue about rue and saying oh lighten up you're just like just having fun or whatever they said and then i remember she, i remember she 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 gave them she gave them a piece of her mind so i did like that scene that just made me, it made me laugh but that's just in case anyone was wondering why i didn't mention trilogy and trilogy dumb or 
dumb and dumb or thing one from two whatever you want to call them but that's all the f questions that i can think of about the show if you have any more that you would like to ask me please let me know in the comments that should be on my instagram or my twitter okay now the next thing i'm going to talk about is my vinyl the last the next thing i'm going to talk about is my vinyl so i did get the euphoria vinyl because i knew that i would probably want to get the vinyl so even while i was listening to the show i think i bought i bought the vinyl while i was still watching the show because i knew by the time i, I finished the show the vinyl should come so i did get the vinyl but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put pictures on this so i'll put pictures on the screen so you can see what it looks like Okay, so I also I really like the the middle of the um of the vinyl because it had pictures of Rue and Jewel together and it had the one when she's throwing when they're lifting her up so when I think it's her overdosing but some people think it's of her dying and then her telling her story of how she died but I don't know how people tell some people think it's that she died and the story of was her before she died but I don't think it's that I think she just overdosed and the scene at the end is her imagination so now i'm going to say my outro so that is all my thoughts on euphoria if i've forgotten something then i apologize but if there's any show that you would recommend please let me know and maybe i might do one of these in the future with all that said if you like this please give it a okay with all that said if you like it please give it a thumbs up also don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out when i post I love you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.